Hello, my name is Edwina Archer and I'm the funding lead for Active Derbyshire and this is a short presentation about Derbyshire County Council's Action Grants programme. As part of this presentation, we'll look at the key details about the fund. There are four different themes of which um, sport and physical activity is one of those themes and we'll look at that particular theme in detail. The aim of the fund is to encourage groups with good ideas about what will make their communities better places to live and applicants can come from a wide range of voluntary not-for-profit organisations including community groups, sports organisations, community interest companies, PTFAs, parish councils. Grants are up to £500, £5,000 and £10,000 and there are two more deadlines uh, remaining for this programme. So there's a deadline ending January 2020 where there's an opportunity to apply for a grant of up to £500. But the last deadline, which is scheduled for May 2020, there's an opportunity also to apply for a grant of either up to £5,000 or £10,000. The fund can cover quite a wide range of expenditure. So it could cover the costs of coach education, so training up a volunteer to help them deliver a new auditional session. It could cover new equipment. Um, it could also cover the cost of short-term venue hire. It won't cover the cost of long-term venue hire. So for example, if venue hire is one of your ongoing running costs for your organisation, it couldn't fund that. But if you were doing something new or additional, which required some short-term uh, rent to, to hire out a venue, uh, then it could potentially cover that cost. Uh, they also give the example of uh, short-term hire of a piece of equipment that was feasible for you to be able to purchase. So they give the example of a um, skip hire for a community cleanup. The fund can also cover the costs of improvements or renovation to an existing facility, promotional costs or volunteer expenses. There are a number of costs that the fund can't support. So, for example, those regular running costs. So if it's normal for your organisation to pay, for example, room hire or ongoing staff costs, it, it can't support those sort of expenditure. It has to be for new or additional expenditure to deliver new or additional activity. It also can't fund uh, things like incentives or promotional clothing, meals and refreshments or entertainers or guest speakers. The programme has four different themes, one of which is a sport and physical activity theme. However, if you've got a sport or physical activity project, I would recommend that you look at the other themes as well. Each theme has a number of priorities that they want projects to meet. So if your project more closely aligns to, for example, the community safety theme, then um, when you're completing your application form, cross the box that details community safety. Now, there's a number of reasons for that. A, because each of the themes are separately assessed. So the assessors will be assessing your application uh, and how it aligns to the priorities of that theme. But also the community safety theme is not as heavily subscribed as, for example, the community activity or the sport and physical activity theme. So they are looking for good projects. Also, if you're applying for the uh, for a grant of up to £500 for the round that ends January 2020, there is the opportunity to apply to more than one theme uh, for different uh, project activity. So that's worth considering as well. So if your project aligns to more than one theme, you can apply for more than one grant of up to £500. These are the priorities for the community activity theme and I've highlighted in blue those those priorities which I think uh, some sport or physical activity projects might align closely to. So that's for, for example setting up a community group, local fair or festival or developing a community space. Uh, it might be worth looking at the other th priorities within each of those themes and not just sort of sticking to kind of my suggestions that I've highlighted in blue. But I, I do think these are probably the most likely out of each of the priorities um, which a sport or physical activity might, project might align to. These are the priorities for the community safety theme. So the one I've highlighted here, which might align to some sport or physical activity projects, is uh, help build cohesive com communities and encourage diversionary activities. These are the priorities for the youth activity grants. So there's three I've highlighted here. So it could be activities for 11 to 19 year olds or up to 25 year olds with additional needs. It could be setting up a new club or holiday scheme. 
This is the Enhanced Youth Grants theme, which is a subsection of the Youth Grants theme. Now, I've not highlighted anything in blue here. However, if you do have a physical activity and sports project which aligns to one or more of these priorities, then it's, it's worth considering. This part of the programme has not had that many applications, so they are looking for good projects that align to this particular part of the programme. This is a physical activity and sports grants theme. So obviously every priority within this theme is highlighted in blue and it covers a wide range of activities. So it's anything from getting communities moving together, um, improving emotional and mental health through physical activity, right through to uh, helping um, new sporting talent and everything in between. Here are some of the things that have been funded through the programme. So we've got uh, some applicants that have applied for equipment. We've got one here where it's, they've applied for funding for equipment and volunteer coaching course. Uh, there's somebody else here that's applied for a table tennis table for the table tennis club. So there's quite a wide range of uh, different sorts of things that have been funded through the programme. Each of the themes are allocated their own budget and each of the themes are assessed separately. So the assessors that will look at the applications that are going to the physical activity and sports theme will be different to the assessors that are looking at, for example, the community activity theme. So this assessed separately. Um, the budget allocation for the physical activity and sports theme for awards up to £500 is just under £188,000 and there's an expectation that around about 375 awards will be made of that level. There's also been an allocation of just under £313,000 for the medium and larger grants and so that's the grants up to £5,000 and up to £10,000. Now obviously um, competition is going to be fierce for those larger grants, so it's a very popular award. Award, uh, and success rates are much lower for those larger awards, um, whereas uh, success rates are, are generally higher for the smaller ones, those, those awards up to £500. Generally, uh, success rates are, are right across the, all those um, sizes of grants is, is around about 65%. So that's a very high success rate. I've seen success rates for some of the funds of being below, well below 10%. However, that still means that around about 35% of applicants will be disappointed. Here are some of the main reasons why some applications are not successful. So, for example, we've had applications from applicants where they're not part of a constituted group. We've also had duplicated bids. So this is where a, a particular sport, where a number of sports clubs have all submitted exactly the same application for exactly the same project. You need to make sure that your project aligns to the needs of your particular organisation. Uh, you also need to make sure that your project aligns to at least one of the priorities of the programme. So as I mentioned in an earlier slide, each of the four themes has a list of priorities. So you need to identify at least one of the priorities within a theme to which your project aligns to. Also, some applicants don't put um, much about the evidence of need for their project. The best form of evidence of need is coming from your potential beneficiaries, and you could evidence that need through surveys or through a meeting. But as long as you can capture some evidence of need and put that into your application, um, that is going to really strengthen your application. Um, the big one here is not providing enough information about what your project is. You need to assume that your, the assessor knows nothing about your project or your organisation. So you need to give them enough information to get an understanding about what you want to do and why you want to do it. We've now come to the end of this short presentation about Derbyshire County Council's Action Grants programme. You can find out more about the programme by googling Derbyshire County Council Action Grants um, and it should be the first thing that comes up on the Google search engine and there'll be the full details about the fund, the guidelines and the application form on Derbyshire County Council's website. If you'd like to speak to myself about the fund, you can telephone me on 07789 nine four one four eight two or you can email me at edwina dot archer at active partners trust that's all one word dot org dot uk